Hey guys, it's Erin. Happily we go here with another creative flow. So we're going to do things a little bit differently today. As you can see, I have a little six by six canvas panel here. It's from Dollar Rani. I think it came in a three pack at Walmart. Super cheap. Anyways, I've already gessoed it and dried it. And now I'm going to grab a pencil here and I'm going to sketch out a face. Unfortunately, I got a phone call and it screwed up my whole filming because I film on my cell phone. So um, you missed that. But here is where I show you what I did. I just sketched out a face and then I ripped out stuff from the flow journal and glued it down. And now I'm showing you this is some thin vine charcoal I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It comes in a pack and I'm sharpening it off to the side. If you have a sandpaper, just some um, very fine sandpaper, you can sharpen it that way. But I'm just using the side there to give it a little bit of a point so it's easier to sketch with. Now I'm kind of just mapping out the face. It's charcoal, it wipes off, see, boom, pretty easy. I'm measuring the eye to kind of guesstimate where they are. And these are huge eyes. This is what you did miss when I was um, sketching is I had a little bit smaller eyes, but then I used that piece of paper and thought it would be great for the eye. So that's why I put that there and they're bigger. I'm just sort of mapping out where the cheekbone is, the side of the face. Most of this is gonna get covered up, but this is just giving me a rough estimate. I love the way charcoal looks and then you put gesso or any sort of acrylic paint over top of it. Um, it gives it a really pretty effect. So I'm just kind of getting, not full definition, but just giving um, placement. I'm putting placement. And now I have um, the acrylic paint here and this is gonna be super sped up, but this will give you an idea of how you could blend that charcoal with the acrylic paints. So I'll just let the music play and you can just watch me do my thing here. with a pretty uh, magenta color from Bria Reese. I will put everything that I use down in the description box below so you can check out all the colors, all the paints, everything that I use. And I am just kind of mapping out lips. Now, the great thing about acrylic paint is if you put something down and you're not a big fan of it, you can always cover it right back up. And as you'll see, this face is gonna get some layers and layers. So I just have a damp paintbrush here and I'm just kind of moving that paint around just to sort of give us an idea of where everything's gonna go. Now, I have that paint there, it's on the brush. Uh, one of the tricks that I like to use is take the same color that you've used, say in the lips or something, and add it to another part of the face. Use it as a uh, part of your shading, and it helps kind of um, bring cohesion to the face. Now, I just have some plain water on the brush right now, and I'm just uh, blending out with my finger. I'm grabbing that pencil again, just a plain uh, Dollar Rowney graphic pen graphite pencil, sorry. And I'm just penciling in kind of where I want the eyes to go, giving them a little bit more definition. Whoops, did you see that? I totally just ripped some of that off. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm actually, I have music playing in the background. I'm just cruising along and I have really enjoyed this process this time and I just rolled with it. So if we make mistakes, if stuff happens, it's all good because it's going to just be an abstract face and we're going to have fun with it. So just have fun. Now I've brought back that vine charcoal stick again and I'm telling you guys, if you don't have any of this vine charcoal by, like if you don't have it in your house now, by the end of this video, you're gonna wanna run out to the store and get some. You can do so many amazing things with it and it's so great for shading and it really cleans up pretty easy. So I know everyone's always afraid of like the messy charcoal but I'm just saying I love it to bits. Just uh, giving her a little bit of a reshape here. 
for her face kind of mapping out and as you can see you can't really see it down here but I'm drawing on my under paper where the end of her chin would be so that way when I come up on the other side here I'll know kind of you know have it better mapped out if that makes sense you just see what I'm doing And now I'm just coming back in with that Deco Art skin tone color and just tidying up a little bit. And this is when I give her a little bit of a nose job too, in case you were worried, because she kind of had a big schnoz there, didn't she? going to move on and do some more layers so make sure that everything is really dry before you get to the next stage I brought out the woodies this is um, they are by Stabilo and I love these babies they're so creamy they're blendable and wonderful um, one of these days I would like to get some of the um, Sennelier oil pastels because I think that those would be dreamy to do faces with as well but for now we're just going to use the woodies and they are also water soluble too so in you know if you messed up or you wanted to blend something out you could totally um, use a little bit of water on your finger and um, blend those as well so we're just going to play with these add a little bit more definition in places and we'll just pop some more music on and play And the charcoal's back again. Now I'm just adding um, just a little bit more uh, definition to the eyes for shading purposes. Um, yeah, as you see, we're just building up layers. It's just all about layers and layers and building up layers. Um, and you know, until you feel like you've gotten it how you want it. So as I know that I want the right side of her face as we're looking at her to be the more shaded side, I'm going with that charcoal and adding some shading. And here I'm doing that uh, highlight, the, the shadowing on the side of her cheekbones to give her face a little more definition and you know give her that slimming look that all of us women love. And now I'll add some uh, accents with some white paint pen. Accidents happen, totally just got way too much paint than I wanted, but that's okay because we can just take it and I'm gonna smudge it with my finger here, blend it out through the top. Don't worry if things happen, you know, you, you can't ruin it, you just means you're gonna have to add a couple extra layers and that's totally fine. So now I have a damp brush and I just kind of blended that out. I have the skin tone color back and I'm just going to do a couple more retouches here and there and just make sure things are blended to my liking.
And here I just have some plain water on my brush and I'm helping smudge that around to uh, blend my colors a little bit better. And then once you're happy with uh, your blending, make sure you dry it before you move on. So we're gonna break the woodies back out. Now, here's some yellow. We're gonna get crazy with color. I'm kind of excited about this. If you follow me on Instagram at all, um, I am happily we go over there, so you can check me out if you're not following me. But if you're following me, you know that I've been working with charcoal sketches lately. Um, I love portrait work, uh, pencil sketches, but I like realistic looking. So today I thought we would just play and have fun and do something that was super abstracty, colorful, uh, not realistic, you know, different, different shape eyes, maybe collage bits, whatever. So that's that's what we're gonna do we're gonna play today so I used the green around the eyes and now I thought I would bring some green into her face I'm just smudging along with my finger and it still has a little bit of the charcoal and whatever other colors I smudged with it so if you are following along with me at home and you want a cleaner smudge make sure that you uh, wipe your fingers off between each color now I just have a little bit of brown for her eyebrows a little bit of brown on the lips, and then I'm going to go ahead and do those cheekbones again, just with a little bit of brown to kind of deepen the shading. Smudge all over, and then I'm gonna use some white on her nose just to brighten up certain areas. I think white is a very underrated uh, crayon color. Now, sometimes it's good to just lift up your artwork and look at it, look at it from different angles and see um, if you're liking where it's going or if you wanna change anything. Now I have a um, another paint pen here, the Sharpie paint pens, and this is just the black, and I'm just gonna do a little bit more detail work. see I'm not tracing her entire eye with the black pen I'm only doing certain areas of it what this does is it gives you the illusion of the highlight hitting the face instead of having to add it in itself And now I'm gonna take that paint pen and I'm just going to draw in the lines of her face. Um, I think I want it to be a little bit smaller and more defined. So I'm gonna do that with the pen. And it doesn't have to be a perfect line because we're gonna come in and paint that outside border. But just so we know where we want to paint. sure which color I want to do yet I'm just gonna take a smudger and it just has a little bit of charcoal on it there's a little charcoal powder from the side there that I'm using just to kind of uh, give some definition to the nose a little bit more um, and now we're gonna add some collage bits back in so I kind of covered over everything I used from the flow so now I'm bringing it back and we're gonna add our three more pieces so this is part of a map that I pulled out of the flow and I'm just using some Uhu glue stick here to glue it on. And now I've got a letter that we used last week. And I just went with the first uh, words that I saw. And this one just happened to be perfect. Um, it says, where do you want it to go? Which I think is wonderful for this art piece today because we're kind of going with the flow. We're not sure where we want it to go, but we want it to go kind of wonky. Now I'm going to, uh, I just ripped out this little piece here and I'm going to glue it onto her face 
And I know I want something underneath where that wording is. And then I saw out of the corner of my eye that same piece I just ripped out. There was an orange circle on it. So I'm just cutting out the circle right now. And I'm going to stick that underneath there just to make the little, our, what we're going to call our sentiment, just to make it pop a little bit more. So again, I'm going to use the uh, Uhu glue stick there and glue that down. I ripped off that end piece and decided I wanted to add it to the top of her head too, just to bring some bit more of the color up there as well. So as I was gluing that down, I decided I really liked that black against her face. So I'm grabbing some of the um, impasto paint from Finnabar, it's Art Alchemy, and I'm just going to paint this. And this is really gonna make that face pop. It's gonna make the colors brighter, it's gonna make the, just everything, just kind of pop off the page, which I was super excited about. So once I was painting this down, I was almost doing like a little dance, like, oh yeah, it's coming together now, and I'm digging this. Decided to bring back that piece of paper again. I just wasn't feeling the map. I just wanted a little bit more color there up on the top of her head. So I have some Uhu glue stick just on the very end, and I'm just going to add another layer there and bring some color up top to her forehead. So while I'm cutting this off, I'm going to remind you to head on over to Tiffany's channel. I have the link down in the description box below and see what three things she chose for her flowish journal this week um, to create. Tiffany is amazing. She's also on Instagram, Southern Gals Designs. So be sure to check her out, follow her, uh, give her some love, likes, comments, all of that good stuff. Now... And you know, I like to have borders on my art, so I'm gonna grab um, this bright orange paint pen here because we have the orange in the circle in her face and some other bits too, and I thought that would just really be a nice pop of color against that black. Now, this paint pen, it's an Elmer's, it's awesome, but I think it's on its last legs, it's just not working for me. So I'm gonna grab the newest marker, which is my Montana paint pen. Look at that orange, isn't it so vibrant? I love it. And the reason I'm using the ruler is I wanted it to have a straight edge along the side there to give it more of a finished look. So that's why I'm doing that. And if you do use a ruler, make sure that you wipe it down before you move it on your art piece or you may end up with marker in places you don't want. How do I know this? Because I've done it myself, people. So at this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to finish off the two corners, um, but then I decided I wanted a finished look, so I went ahead and did it. I'm gonna go around the border and the sides for a second coat. Once that's done, I'm gonna break out my hand rolled soft pastels from Jack Richardson and just do some highlighting and also some more shading. Um, I have a pastel brush. You could use any paintbrush, just something with soft bristles um, that's just gonna blend nicely. I'm gonna use another Montana acrylic paint pen here. Um, I wasn't happy with the brightness of the white around her lips, so I'm just going to knock that back a little bit by adding some more paint there. I'm gonna, I'm not putting it over her entire lip, just in certain areas, and then I will take a damp paintbrush and blend that out. brightening up the highlight in her eye and then adding a little bit of highlight in her lip. I don't want to leave it 
plain, so I'm adding a little bit of water, but then I had too much water and it was kind of muddy, so I'm adding a little bit more of the paint pen, which actually blends really well once the water's on it, just to give that a, a very muted highlight. So I decided I liked that brown and I wanted to add a little bit more of it. So I found a pastel that matched. I tested it out on my underpaper first and now I'm going to go ahead and just deepen some of those shadows with uh, this brown and then I also use a more kind of purpley brown as well. color I have a deeper blue um, for some shading and thought it would be pretty to just add kind of another pop there she's got the blue in her eyes and then bring some blue up against the eyebrows and then whoops that paper kind of uh, rubbed up a little bit there so I'm just gonna take a little matte medium on my finger and uh, push that back down so as I'm wiping off some of the pastel there on the black, I decided that her face was sort of blah there. So um, there's the red scribbles on the top of her head and then under her cheek, and I decided to outline her face in the same red color. That'll bring that red uh, further into the piece um, and then also help tie it together, I think anyways. Then I decided to add a little bit of the red to the lips and I'm going to do the same process I did before, adding the red and then using just a um, damp paintbrush to blend it out. As I was doing her lips, I was looking at her and she sort of reminded me of, remember those, um, they were the porcelain clown dolls and they had like a tear on their face or something. So as I was thinking that, I decided to do a couple little doodles and uh, I don't know, I was just rolling with it, you know, going with my gut. Then I brought back the blue uh, woody because I decided I wanted to have a little bit of blue on her eye over there. So I just took a little water brush and add a little bit of water to blend it out. And then I'm going to draw, um, just define those orange lines with the black pen just to make them sharper and more defined. I decided to brighten up her eyebrows with the water pen just to activate that brown woody. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple highlights with the smudger. I'm using the charcoal from the side of the paper there um, on the edge of the smudger and I'm just going around the sentiment. This is gonna help the sentiment kind of get into the piece instead of just looking like it was glued on top by accident. So it'll darken up uh, the edges a little bit and um, yeah grunge it out, you know, Aaron style. I still wasn't feeling her eyebrows, so I grabbed a Faber-Castell big brush marker and I'm just going to kind of add a little bit more definition to them. And like I was saying, it's all about the layers. So I am just going back and I'm not doing all of it. I'm just accenting certain parts of the black to make them a little bit more blacker and make those uh, deep shadows pop a little bit more. And doing the same thing with the highlights as well, adding that line on her nose. It was just, there was a smudge there and it was kind of bugging me. So I just took the uh, paint pen and a little bit of water and that wasn't doing it. So now I just have some gesso on a paintbrush and I'm just gonna go over top of that. I 
my favorite part of any piece is adding the finishing touches, extra little highlights and shadows, and that's what I'm gonna finish doing here, and that's pretty much going to uh, complete today's project. I know it was a little bit different flow this week, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, and hey, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. If you created alongside me, be sure to tag me because I would love to see what girl emerged for you onto your canvas. Don't forget to check out Tiffany's channel. And of course, thank you guys so, so much because it wouldn't be the same without you. I mean, I'd be creating alone and that would be pretty boring. So thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, happy creating.